Hi, so in order to make an artificial um, rubber from milk, what we need is some casein. Now you can get the casein from the milk by letting it down with acid. So you just get some milk and you pour in some acid. You can use acetic acid or weak hydrochloric or weak sulfuric acid. And you can pour it in and the casein will clump out. You then want to wash it thoroughly, dissolve it with an alkali, and then re-precipitate it with an acid, wash it thoroughly again, and you'll get some casein, dry it and powder it. But alternatively, you can buy this stuff which they sell for bodybuilders and um, health foods. Now, there's two kilos there and that cost me 16 pounds. But given all the washing and preparation for actual natural milk, I thought it'd be better to get a casing in a bag and it'll make everything so much easier and quicker. It also smells wonderfully. This one's 100% natural casing, it's got nothing in it. It's actually um, calcium caseate and that's just good enough. So that's what we're going to use. Now, to make the rubber, you need 200 millilitres of deionized water, which is what I've got here, and then you need 10 grams of potassium hydroxide, which is this stuff here, and hence the gloves, incidentally. Potassium hydroxide is really, really caustic, so you don't want to be handling it, and when you add it to the water, it will get hot, so you need to add it carefully and not let it get too hot. Don't just chuck it all in there and stir, do this through the jar. You'll be sorry. So add it gently, stir it, and take your time. The other thing that you need is this stuff, which is ordinary yellow sulphur. Now I just got this down at the DIY store, and you need somewhere between 10 and 30 grams of that. The more of that you add, the more rubber-like and elastic it will be. So 10 grams is your minimum, 30 grams is your maximum. Somewhere in between there, you're going to have to play around with it a little bit to get the kind of elasticity that you want. So we're using potassium hydroxide, casein, and sulphur to make our artificial rubber. So as I said before, 200 millilitres of water and anti-potassium hydroxide. Now I've got a glass stirring rod here and I'm going to add that a bit at a time. And then leave it to dissolve. When it's dissolved, I'll get back to you. Okay, and there it's dissolved. Now the reason you're making an alkali solution is alkali solution of dissolved casein. Now we've got our 100 grams of caseinate and we add that. Now the caseinate will take a little while to swell and dissolve, but you stir it around until it's swollen and dissolved. And when it's done that, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I left that um, standing for about 20 minutes and then I gave it a stir and you can see you've got this thick glutinous mass. Now the hardest thing you're going to find with doing this is actually getting it homogeneous. So you've got to get it nice and even throughout. Once you've got it to this sort of gluey looking mass, that's when you add your sulphur. And like I say, between 10 and 30 grams, I'll just add it in and then mix it up again until everything is nice and homogeneous. That's what you're aiming for. It's got to be even. Okay, so there we go. There it is all nicely whipped up. And at this stage, not only does it look like latex rubber, you can use it like latex rubber. So I actually put the um, whisk on that, incidentally, which got it quite frothy. But what I've got here is a piece of cloth, and what I'm going to do is coat the cloth with this. And then let it dry. So we'll put that somewhere to dry. Okay, so it's the next day, and this has had a chance to dry. So you can see I applied it and folded the cloth over, and what we've got is a flexible, waterproof, rubbery cloth that's um, actually a bit like Macintosh, actually. I also dried a lump of it, so we've got here like a hockey puck of it. That's been drying for 24 hours, and you can see it's just like a lump of rubber. It's astonishing, actually. So it forms a nice lump of rubber. Now, of course, I can't leave well alone, and um, because I'm interested in conductive inks, the very next thing I did was add a load of carbon to it and turned it into an ink. Now, this is the first attempt at it, so the resistance of this is about... Um, about two kilo ohms a square for that one. That's about 10 microns thick. So not particularly good resistance at the moment, but you'll notice it's sitting on plastic, which is really cool. It goes on plastic really well. And if I bend it over so you can see that, then look at that. 
That sits on really well and is a nice flexible ink that doesn't crack with a really excessive bend in it. So I'm going to work on that a bit more and turn that into... Um, I think I can get that conductivity down to about sort of 4, 10 ohms a square, something like that. Now I'm going to work on that and um, get a nice flexible um, conductive ink. Now that could be used obviously for things like flexible heaters, which is one of the plans I have for it. But you could also use it for clothing. You could um, put that under cloth and that would make a uh, base for heating um, shirts, motorcycle jackets, gloves, that sort of thing. Uh, it would also be an uh, EM ink as well that would have probably good um, attenuation properties but again that's just something I'll have to have tested later as we go along on there but that's where we are at the moment it sticks nicely to plastic very flexible no cracking need to work on the conductivity so there we go quite a few uses for casein and sulfur in order to make an imitation rubber anyway I hope you enjoyed watching and thank you very much